Hello everybody. Are you tired of this jumpsuit yet? Too bad, cause I'm not loving jeez. Tiger strike jumpsuit. Oh boy. Man, it just makes everything better. I went out to do errands yesterday. I, I uh, had to, I loaded up a bunch of car parts, new short block and turbo and stuff for my uh, for my winter Subaru. Took them over to the auto shop and uh, wearing this, and they were just like. What do you, they're like, I, yeah, you, you can pull it off because everybody's just like, oh yeah, that's, uh, that's Ned. All right, okay. Anyway, I love this thing. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm into Chevalerie, Diptyque, uh, Bourgoy. Um, yeah, totally, buy wine from me. Take my wine recommendations, says the guy in the tiger stripe neon jumpsuit. So this is Bourgoy. This is 100% Cabernet Franc from the Central Loire. Um, Bourgoy is one of the best appellations in the world for Cabernet Franc, along with its, its counterpart Chinon. Um, Domaine de Chevalerie has been here for, I want to say it's 14 generations now. Um, oh, why can I not remember their father's name now? Emmanuel and Stephanie are siblings. Pierre, their father Pierre Callot passed away, oh, I forget, four or five years ago? I should, I should remember, I should know that. Anyway, so, uh, but they, uh, Stephanie and Emmanuel had been working there, you know, like for their whole lives and took over. Um, I wanna say it was late 1600s when their family uh, originally bought this, this winery, the house, and started making wine here. Over the years, over the generations, they've added land, you know, more vineyard sites, more land within Bourgoy. I forget how many acres they have now. Um, it's relatively a lot. Um, they farm everything organically, I think with some biodynamic practices mixed in. They actually sell off a lot of their grapes and only make wine from specific vineyard sites that they feel are exceptional and have different unique characteristics. So they make a range of wines, um, Bretèche, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, Pew Mi Mio, um, uh, Galichet, something, Mont, there's a hill that I've never actually gotten any of that wine. Uh, geez, I don't remember them all now. Anyway, because I normally I can never get them. Generally, so this diptyque is an assemblage. They mix fruit from a bunch of those vineyards to make a Bourgoy that is like a, a great representation of their style and what they do, and that like you can drink now, sort of, because. Uh, along with being an extremely old winery and having fantastic vineyard sites throughout Bourgoy, having some of the, the greatest little plots of, of, of vines, um, they also, their house is built on a subterranean limestone quarry from the 11th to 13th centuries. Uh, so they have a massive cavern underneath their, their house, underneath their winery, so they can just hold wines until they are ready to drink. So the, the limiting factor isn't storage space, uh, which oftentimes with wine it is. Uh, the, store, the limiting factor for aging is not storage space, it is money, you know, and like how long do you have to want to sit on this, this wine that you made without getting any return? Um, so they, you know, so they, so they sell grapes though every year, which gives them cash flow, and they sell, they sell this, which is really, really lovely, and I'm excited to drink this because I don't think I've had the 2017 vintage yet. Here, I'm gonna just, I don't know, I'm gonna try to look weird to create a good picture to put on the front of this video here. Um, anyway, but then they age a lot of those single vineyard wines for extended periods of time. So um, if you're actually watching, and obviously you are, and you're paying attention to what I'm saying right now, I actually just pre-ordered like half a pallet 
of wine from them. All their different single vineyards. Uh, most of it is all from the 2014 vintage, but I think there's one... Oh, I forget whether it's Bretesh or Chevalry, where I'm getting, I think, some 2011. Uh, so I'm getting this, this shipment of all these different single vineyard wines that have, you know, at least six years of aging on them now. Uh, some more. Some of them are single vineyard, like, bottlings that I've never even been able to get before. And I've been doing business with them, with Laurent Bonnois, for, I don't know, over 10 years now. Um, something like that. So, very exciting. They're not arriving, I don't think, until January. But, like, if you're watching right now and, you know, you care about this, like, get in touch with me or get in touch with, you know, a wine shop that you like working with and um, we can set some aside for you because they're going to be stellar and I'm, you know, I only get things like, I've only been able to do this like once before with them. So it's very rare that I get stuff like this. So anyway, moving on to the diptyque. It smells like Cabernet Franc, but it's, but it smells like ripe, like dark, juicy fruit. That like black, that vivid like blackberry, blueberry, a little bit of like like dark blueberry. Someone's roasting coffee over there in a warehouse, and I'm I'm adjusting for that. I'm I'm, I'm compensating. It's very dark fruit, but it's like so juicy and fresh. Yeah, lots of lots of like blackberry, black raspberry, but like super super vivid blackberry like you like have a box of a little pint of black ras blackberries and you're just like ah, and smash them on your face and there's a little bit of like a peppery brambly woodsiness thing to it too mm, it's really great it's going to open up and be, be be beautiful. Right now, it's a little bit like angular and crunchy, which is totally fine. It's delicious. I just from tasting it right now, knowing that like it's just been released and stuff like that, and I just got it and blah 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 blah, and it's very cold from being in my very cold warehouse and just opening it. Like right now, it's a little tight and shut down. The fruit is still beautiful and it's very supple and it's not aggressively tannic. The structure, like the tannins and the acidity and everything here are really, really well integrated. It's very French, it's very proper. It's very like good, like this lives up to my uh, idea of like this wine as being one of, being a really great expression of Bourgogne. Like this is, if I was teaching a class about Bourgogne, I would get this wine because it is very good. Everything about it is good. It's like good in a very classic traditional way. Um, it is fermented with indigenous yeast also. Not that that has any bearing, but I like that on a conceptual theoretical level. I, it might smell like coffee, but I can't tell because everything smells like coffee right now. I don't think it really smells like coffee, but there's, but there is like, it's not just fruit. There is a little bit of like a woodsy savory, like something in there. It's just that right now, like I smell like coffee, everything mm -hmm. here, those trees smell like coffee. Yeah. Okay. Bright, vivid. Yeah. It is like dark. Tiny, like a, a like the idea of like bitter, like baking chocolate in the mid palate. Um, you know, it's really funny. Like this is Cabernet Franc, and this is serious Cabernet Franc. Yesterday I was drinking that Gamay, that um, Claude de la Rolette Fleury. The Gamay and Fleury has the reputation of being light. Claude de la Rolette not as much because because of what I was saying yesterday. But that Fleury was heavier than this. Bourgoy. Cabernet Franc, in my mind, generally Cabernet Franc should be like a more substantial wine than, um, than Gamay, but that Gamay was like so big and muscular 
and this is like very well structured but it's like precise and I don't know not not restrained but it's like fine finely grained or something is a way to way to say it um, it's it's not a delicate wine because it does have great tannic and acidic structure and it's complex tasting um, it's just not a very like big heavy wine Yeah, the tannins are really soft and elegant. They're there and they draw the finish out and they give you like a little perception of like a like baking chocolate, but they're not too heavy. They're not aggressive. You know, 2017, that's the advantage of having some age. It really, it mellows the wine out and just everything comes together. I'm trying to let it warm up in my mouth because it's so cold. Not horribly, but anyway, um, it's funny. It's not heavy. It's got nice bright acidity that makes it like crisp and like fresh fruit. Uh, it's really the fruit that like blackberry is really vivid and juicy on the palate, just like it is in the aroma. Um, and then Yeah, there's a real, like, black pepper in there, too. That's really cool. All right, great. That's it. Um, Domaine de Chevalerie. Diptyque, Bourgogne. This is, this is excellent, lovely, classic, beautiful Cabernet Franc. Um, if you want to know what Cabernet Franc is, this is a great place to start. Um, because there are Cabernet Francs out there that are, like, rougher, more aggressive, more tannic. Uh not as polished, not as ripe, all these things. Like this is a great, like, this is, this is a good example of like doing it right. Um, and they're a great old family winery and all, all those things I said. So, all right, thanks a lot. I'm gonna go and do cool things in my tiger stripe jumpsuit now.